Hi, I'm Olivia and I'm here with Robin today to tell you a little bit about some literature on resilience. One thing I love about research is not only thinking about how it relates to the bigger picture, but also to my experiences. So when I started reading the literature on resilience and recovery, and when we were talking about it, Robin, I was thinking about where I see the research trends in my own life and struggles. That is so true, Olivia. When I started reading this research, it's like looking into a mirror. What am I doing and what could I be doing better? I think it can also help us recognize different aspects of our resilience and opportunities to increase it. There are multiple frameworks researchers use when studying resilience that look at different pieces of resilience. These frameworks provide some insight into how resilience shapes our stress responses. One thing the different resilience frameworks have in common is that they describe resilience as a process of recovering from stress, adversity, or burnout, rather than a characteristic that people either have or they don't. This is the first and perhaps most important idea. Resilience is a process and aspects of it can be learned. Earlier we introduced you to the graph depicting the concept of personal range of variability, which demonstrates a process of stress and recovery. Now we're going to zoom in on one of the cycles of the graph to explore one iteration of the resilience process. It might be helpful to think about this in the context of how the body recovers after exercise, injury, or illness. When we experience an injury, there's a period of time where you can't keep up your normal level of performance. Similarly, stress can take a mental or physical toll that requires you to rest. Then with that rest, we can move forward and adapt to our new situation. This period of recovery allows us to build back up to operating at our original level. You may even find, after all of this, that you exceed your previous level of motivation, performance, or skill. This is the final phase in the resilience process, growth. Growth will look different depending on the situation and what else is going on in your life. Maybe you don't feel as stressed or your recovery time is shorter. Let's take a look at three models in the literature that describe how stressors impact us and how resilience can protect against that impact. In the compensatory model, Werner and Smith recognize that the resilient characteristics decrease the amount of stress in individual experiences. If a postdoc has a manuscript rejected, their interpretation of that feedback can impact the stress they experience from the rejection. While the stressor is fixed, a rejected manuscript, your interpretation of that stressor affects how you feel and proceed. For instance, do you see the rejection as a reflection of you as a scholar or as a message that the manuscript needs some work before it's ready for publication? I kind of think of this model as the stress happens, but you choose the response model. Another model, the challenge model, described by O'Leary, addresses the adaptation phase of resilience. This model states that a challenge, provided it is not too extreme, can enhance a person's adaptation and prepare them better to face the next challenge. Maybe the postdoc whose manuscript was rejected worked through the edits, revised, and resubmitted. Unfortunately, the manuscript gets rejected a second time. I can see this going in a couple directions. A second rejection could add more stress and the postdoc feels even worse. Or maybe the second round of comments show them that their manuscript is getting stronger than it was and it's almost ready to publish. Yes, so when the postdoc recognizes their own progress, the rejection may feel less personal and the next round of revisions are a little bit easier. The challenge model is kind of a what doesn't kill us makes us stronger model. Finally, the protective factor model, described by O'Leary, Bonanno, and Unger, considers resilience as factors that support the entire process. In our example of the twice-rejected manuscript, what might be some protective factors that support the process of adaptation and recovery? So in our example, the protective model might play out in several ways. Say the postdoc has joined a writer's group. They would have a whole community then of support. They would have seen others in the process of revision whose manuscripts were eventually accepted. Being part of this group could help the postdoc develop writing skills, might boost their confidence, normalize manuscript rejection, and better understand the process of getting something published. These factors all contribute to decreasing the stress brought on by rejection. One thing I think isn't represented well in these models is the recovery process. We'll spend some time later thinking about recovery in depth. So hopefully, even amidst all of these struggles, triumphs, and plateaus, we're growing. We're learning how to be resilient and getting a lot of practice. We're taking action to control the things we can, 
and stepping back when we need to. At the same time, it's not straightforward or easy. It's not straightforward at all. No. It's really frustrating, actually. I've been there. Me too. I'll highlight some resources with you later on to help here. Everyone experiences ups and downs, both personally and professionally. As you continue to practice resilience, you'll get a better sense of how you respond to stress, and you will develop strategies to keep yourself moving forward and to grow.